Hey brothers and sisters, God bless each and every single one of you. It's Hunter's Point here with another video. Um, I said I was going to do this video last night, but I just got super tired, so I held it off till today. Uh, this, there's a very alarming trend that's being discovered of earthquakes that are continuing to rattle the West. This is an endtimeheadlines.org article, so I'm going to get right into it here. Why has the Western United States suddenly been shaking so violently the past several weeks? On Tuesday, the constant barrage of headlines about the coronavirus pandemic was interrupted by e an enormous earthquake that hit central Idaho. It was about roughly 78 miles or so to the north of uh, Boise, and I did a video on that when it happened. Of course, Idaho is not exactly known for earthquakes, so this was quite a surprise. I meant to say that in the video that I did on that. Idaho doesn't see a lot of earthquakes. Earthquakes are, are pretty rare in Idaho, but especially earthquakes of a magnitude 6 or higher. I mean, you, you just don't see that stuff in Idaho very often. The largest earthquake in Idaho, in Idaho history was the magnitude 6.9 Bora Peak earthquake back in 1983. So when a magnitude 6.5 earthquake struck not too far from Boise on Tuesday, it really stunned a whole lot of people. And according to the Spokesman Review, this quake could be felt as far away as Calgary, Alberta, Canada. The USGS measured a 6.5 magnitude earthquake at a depth of 10 miles just before 5 p.m. Mountain Time uh, on Tuesday. And the center of the quake took place about 45 miles to the west of Chalice, Idaho. This is an event that those living up in the northwest will remember for a long time to come because of how rare earthquakes are up there. There was a tremendous amount of shaking over the region according to at least one report. Some people actually ran outside yelling. Uh, an entry in Volcano Discovery said sustained moderate shaking for several minutes. Rumbling sound heard. People ran outside yelling. Knickknacks fell off the shelves. Um, items suspended from ceilings slash beams still slightly swaying 10 minutes even after the earthquake. Uh, all the way over in Helena, Montana, someone described the shaking like being on a small ship at sea during a storm. And a restaurant owner in Stanley, Idaho, reported that the water next to me is still vibrating. And this was, again, just minutes after the earthquake back on Tuesday uh, afternoon into Tuesday evening. So, you know, I, Idaho isn't a place that sees a lot of earthquakes. And they suffered a 6.5. Again, the largest earthquake they ever had was a 6.9 magnitude. I've been saying for a long time that I feel like... You know, these earthquakes and the rise of natural disasters overall mixed in with this coronavirus pandemic is truly the beginning of sorrows. That is how I've seen it since the, the very beginning of this coronavirus. And then you, you'd continue to see all the natural disasters and earthquakes and, and wars and rumors of wars, right? The conflicts we've had with Iran and everything's kind of converging together. So it, it's more important now that we see this trend of more and more earthquakes happening with a higher and higher uh, intensity uh, that fits right in line with, you know, the birth pangs right? That the birth pangs increase in both intensity and frequency until the baby comes. And likewise, these signs are going to continue to happen at a higher intensity and frequency until not only we're out of here, but Jesus's second coming period at the end of the tribulation period. Remember, the second coming is split into two events, the rapture of the church, where Jesus comes in the clouds to snatch up his bride, his, his, his church, his body of Christ, which is us, the believers, that's the first part of the second coming is the rapture, and that's before the tribulation period. The second part of Jesus' coming is at the end of the seven-year tribulation period for the battle of Armageddon, where we, the believers, will come back down through the clouds onto earth with Jesus, and that'll be at the end of the tribulation. But uh, the rapture is imminent, guys. Birth pangs are continuing to increase. Uh, more important now than ever that if you have not believed on Jesus Christ that you do so, because that is how you're saved. Right, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It's that Jesus Christ died on the cross. He shed his precious blood for the remission of all mankind's sin on the cross at Calvary. Right, past, present, and future sins were placed on Jesus' back, and then he shed his blood. He was buried, and he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Right? If you believe that precise gospel, that is you believing in Jesus Christ and you are saved. The nanosecond you believe, you are indwelled with the Holy Spirit, whereby you are saved and sealed with it until the day of redemption, which is the rapture, I believe. 
So I, I implore you, if you have not believed on Christ, to do so, because we're only going to see more of these earthquakes. We're only going to see more and more tornadoes and, and hurricanes and volcanic eruptions and wars and rumors of wars and, and, and famines and, and diseases and, and pestilences, viruses like this coronavirus. This is only going to happen more and more as we get closer to the rapture. So I implore you to believe on Jesus Christ if you haven't. You know, for by grace have you been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, lest any man should boast. It's Ephesians 2, 8, 9. It's by grace alone, through faith alone, and Christ alone that you're saved. It's not of any works or how you live your life. Obeying commandments will not get you saved. Keeping the law will not get you saved. It's your belief in Jesus Christ's gospel, that he died and he was buried and he rose again on the third day for your sins, as well as all mankind's sin, past, present, and future. So that's where I'll end the video. Um, I could be doing another video today. Not exactly positive, but there's plenty of material. So, you know, if you see me later on, you know, don't be surprised. But at the same time, you know, you might see me tomorrow. I, I don't know. It just, it depends on, on what breaks and how often it's breaking because it's getting harder to keep up with all the news. But um, that is where I will end it. Um, I will see you all again either today or tomorrow should the Lord Terry is coming. Otherwise, I'll meet you up in the clouds here real soon, brothers and sisters. God bless.